We don't have a okay, skit. So like, we don't need a skit. Yes, we do. No, we what, don't. Let's think of something funny to say. Um, I want bada loom bop, I want bamboo. That's it. That's it. That's a whole skit. We're done. Welcome <laughs> to the Loincloth Hour, a podcast <laughs> where three guys talk about sexy cartoon men mm -hmm. and thirst after them. Although this time we're going to be talking more about a certain cartoon woman, I have a feeling. Yeah. She is the showcase of this episode, this four part episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I forgot how long City of Stone Which, was until I saw the episode list. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a, quite the. Some of us have been waiting for this mm -hmm. since we started doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be all of us. We've all been waiting for City of Stone. We love City of Stone. Uh, I'm. I'm excited. Are you excited for City of Stone? Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, like, Hiron is, like, nodding, like, frantically. Like, like, <laughs> yes, I am. And then Sid is, like, Sid's playing it totally cool. He's just like, yeah, you know, whatever. One episode's the same as another to me. That's just it's how like... I deal with, that's how I deal with things, you know? It's like, yeah, man. Uh, before we start, though, I do want to make a plug for those who are just joining us. Uh, we have a Patreon and we have just finished the first Patreon only video for it, which is us covering the Marvel Gargoyle comics. Mm -hmm. uh, like we we read them, we do all the voices as we go, we live react to them, mm -hmm. uh, and Sid has edited our our stylings, our vocal stylings, uh, into a video. It's amazing. I've I've watched some of it. Like it's it's amazing. So if you want to wa if you want to watch this, uh, just subscribe to our Patreon. It's three dollars. Uh, it's not that much. And if you pay a little extra, if you pay five dollars or more, we'll say your name at the end of each episode that we do from this point on. Really? I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but there is a name that we're going to be saying at the end. So oh. we're very excited to say the single name and if you want to know what this name is you have to listen all the way to the end of this episode and then you'll hear it and it'll it'll change your life sounds to me <laughs> like we got a real special boy in the yeah. audience uh -huh. huh? yes, yes, <laughs> we yes, have a special me. boy we're gonna give a shout out to yes, exactly. <laughs> or girl i don't know I, I believe it is a boy in this case. So speaking of special boys, Sid, it's also a special day for you. Uh huh. So we're recording on your birthday. Uh, we are currently recording on my twenty fifth birthday, oh which God. is today. A quarter century. I know. I feel like older than twenty five, but at the same time. Wait, how old is Gargoyles, the show? Uh, older than me. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. It's fine. I try not That's to think awesome. about it. I was there spiritually. <laughs> I said, I just said, try not to think about it. <laughs> well, I, okay, I made the mistake of thinking about what you said, <laughs> and you like, wait, what? Anyway, uh... uh 28. Our girls will be turning 28 this October. Oh my god. Ooh. It's an old boy. It's almost as old as you are. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> You're not Fancy. that much older than this show is. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. anything else? Any other business? We should say who we are. I think I stiffed that part. Mm -hmm. I'm Manicorn. I'm Huron. I'm Sid. Okay, now you know our names. Yeah, that, Great. you know who the fuck we are now. So okay. who do you yell at when you know you get annoyed <laughs> with our uh, rambling? Uh, oh, and speaking of the comic, I think I forgot to mention this. Uh, in Marvel Gargoyles, there is already male nudity starting from issue one. Oh yeah, we <laughs> have, have <laughs> naked people yeah. in the comic. Gosh, I should okay. have led with that. Yeah, but you know, don't don't spoil too much. Like, I'm we not going to spoil anything. I we don't want to give the context of men the naked in men in this issue. That we but the her. naked men, there are you know, there's <gasps> they exist. There exist. They're on panel. We see we see things. I. Okay. <laughs> so previously on Gargoyles, I named her. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. We we yeah. see so much of Enter Macbeth in the previously on section, and it's just like Macbeth, like talking to Goliath and being like, "Oh, you think you know Demona? You don't know shit." And then Goliath falls down a hole, and we see his pecs like go in and out. Yeah, I, I like 
that highly show enjoyed uh-huh, from the first uh-huh. time. I noticed that when I was watching. They it had to like show it to us a dead. They were proud like, of it. Yeah. It was like the one, one of the few good animations from that episode. Um, but yeah, what else happened there? Uh, That's all I wrote down, actually. That's that, all I wrote down. That was pretty much the entire yeah. flashback was just them shortcutting through all of Enter Macbeth and also, um, like, a very brief clip of Demona from the first five episodes. But for some reason, they mm-hmm. didn't dwell on that. Oh, yeah, no, because she says, humanity is our enemy, Goliath. Yeah. Mm. I remember that part. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we open on what looks like an active crime scene in progress. There's like a thousand cops parked outside this building. Uh, and we see Elisa also pulling up. Um, so there's a hostage negotiation going on. And for some reason, they have Matt Bluestone, <laughs> like, as oh the negotiator. <laughs> Who's fucking... Who? Okay, isn't he, like... He definitely he just, like... he just joined the force, and, like, he's in charge he of this? he just transferred to this precinct. So he's not, like, a brand new detective or anything. But, like, Elisa I've... has seniority on yeah. him. Like, I feel why like is she behind the He megaphone? definitely lied to because someone. She said she didn't want to be. To and get... she... <gasps> No, no, no. So Elisa was asked first. But Elisa's like, you know what? Talk to these people isn't going to get us anywhere. I'm just going to go call the gargoyles. Matt, you do oh, so Is this. that why she's fucking late to this, too? Yeah. Because she's just showing up as that this is happening. That makes sense, actually. <laughs> but, like, I was thinking this point, like, they have Matt doing this. And, like, no one in the entire show so far has liked Matt. Like, in <laughs> any way. Like, he's the least charismatic person in the entire police yeah. department. Yeah. And he's the one talking to the terrorists. Which is going about as well as you'd expect. Yeah, because Matt's in charge of it. Um, it reminds me of, like, that scene from the other guys where, like, um, Will Ferrell and, like, uh, Mark Wahlberg are trying to talk down, like, this jumper or whatever. Mm. And, like, I, I forget the circumstances, but, like, Mark Wahlberg is just calling the jumper a piece of shit and he needs to just get his shit together. And then, like, oh Will Ferrell's just like, hey, come on, there's a lot of nice things out there, like soda pop. I can imagine Matt being about as effective as what you just said. Like, <laughs> like, you know, trying to talk reason to the people, release the hostages. Yeah. No, no, you can't die until you find out the truth about the Illuminati. Uh-huh. Oh, there we go. Okay, That's well, Matt. what he actually goes with, he, this is what he leads with. He says, it's getting late. <laughs> as if, like... <laughs> Like, that's his number one reason for, like, them to, like, stop what they're doing. Like, in his most petulant, like, whiny voice possible. Um, and then he says, like, let's stop right here before somebody gets hurt. Um, so after this, this insane, like, butch lesbian knocks out a window and she points this huge gun at, like, all the cops. Um, who is she? Who is this woman? She's Demona. She's not... (laughs) I wish she was Demona. I looked her up on the guard with me. Her name is Terrorist. Yeah. She doesn't have a name, but I adore her. This whole I think she's great. This whole scene just scene just looking back on it has a very ungargoyle feel. Like something's really off compared mm-hmm. to any other scene. Well, we know in the why. Show. I well, mean Yeah, we know why. If but... it if it's in very well with the theme of this episode. But okay, I do want you to know, Sid, that I also discovered something on the guard with me, which is as this hostage scenario is happening, it's being broadcast on the news, and Wolf is watching this. And this is the moment, apparently, he decides to, like, for the pack to all become criminals. Because I guess he sees these criminals on TV, and he's like, yeah, this is what we should be doing. <laughs> um, oh, and I don't, okay, I don't understand this, because... Oh, God. This is what I said on the wiki. However, they're already criminals. They've already yeah. busted out of prison, so I don't know why... Like, how are they not criminals before, but they, they are criminals They share one brain on. cell, I swear. But that's what the no, wiki this said. This figured out that they're criminals, apparently. Oh, maybe. He's like, oh, we've been doing this shit all along. Wait, are we criminals? Are we the baddies? He seemed to say... <laughs> It's like, I feel like they he already knew this, but like he saw this, he's like, oh, we should be doing this. And Dingo's uh-huh. like, Wolf, we already do this. We already do and this. And Wolf is like, well, let's go out and do it some more. Yeah. yeah. That's the closest like explanation I can come up with. Like but... it, it was inspirational <laughs> in the wrong sense. He probably saw this awesome butch terrorist lady and was like, yeah, I want to have what she has. I want to mm-hmm. have that energy. Mm-hmm. Because she immediately screams, we will never give in. 
our cause is worth any sacrifice. And she just, you know, she starts blasting at all the mm. cops. I, I don't know what her cause is, and I wish that I did. Um, but, okay. Where the hell was I? So she's shooting laser blasts. Um, I wonder, if, do you think that our friend of the channel, Tony Dracon, supplied this woman with her weapons? Because they look like high-tech lasers. Ah, uh, it's Do you think they know each other? Possibility. It seems quite likely. I'm just looking for, like, anything. Anything I can latch onto with terrorists, because I do adore her. <laughs> she's she's kind of psychotic. Like, I feel like she, her and Hyena would get along. It, you know, they, prob they probably have already fucked in the past. Oh, yeah. Hyena is canonically, like, just bisexual, so Yeah, especially possible. for this type of person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I can see it. Um... But so Matt and Elisa, they're like cowering behind some police cars, and Matt's all like, oh, I think they're starting to see it our way. <laughs> and Lisa says like, shut the fuck up, stop talking to me, oh you fucked this up. Um, but she does see some sexy gargoyle silhouettes coming, because they're outlined against the massive full moon. Because mm -hmm. it's never not a full moon in this show. Um, uh, yes, the hot people have arrived. The hot, the, yeah, the hotties the are day. here. Uh, so inside the building... It's some kind of vault inside, and we see, you know, the butch armed lesbian. There's also a bunch of other guys who also have, like, rifles. And their hostages are... Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm, I was born ready. I know who, exactly who it is. It's you Brendan and, and, and Margo. And Mark. <laughs> I recognize their yeah. bitchiness immediately oh, like how do they keep ending up in these situations it's like mm. literally every week their lives end up in danger again they're not smart they people. leave dangerous lives <laughs> but okay is marco is she like the da or something she, or is she the she, future da she will become the da so following the events of Hunter's moon we don't She's know anything assistant. about her life <laughs> prior to her becoming the da in the aftermath of hunter's moon she's very mysterious but I'm surprised she hasn't, like, already, like, sold out her husband. I mean, like, kill him, but just, like, let yeah, him leave. Yeah, like, in the in the third episode uh -huh. of Three Thugs. Yeah, like, where she locked she, Brendan she locked him out. out and looks like, let him get dead. Like, I'm surprised they're <laughs> still together. Like, what the too. fuck? Like, raise your standards a little bit, Brendan. Gosh. Uh, but along with Brendan and Margo, there's also three peculiar little girls there. There's one with blonde hair. One with black hair and one with white hair, and I I don't know who they are, but they seem to draw the eye for some reason. Because they're like three identical young girls that just don't seem to belong in that situation at all. No, they, and they they seem very calm too, because they're just standing there like mm -hmm -hmm. like the um, like the girls from The Shining. Yeah, though they do look like those girls from The Shining, though. Mm -hmm. Come play mm. with us. Yeah, it's like that energy. Mm -hmm. um, so Vernon asks, like, what are you going to do to us? And the, the terrorist leader says, if our demands are met, nothing. If not, and then she cocks her rifle threateningly. <laughs> Jesus. And Margo's just like, please, just let us go. And one of the weird little girls is like, it'll be over soon. Um, so and right after she says that, one of the walls just like bursts open and like Goliath's pecs come through it. Um, and like he's just like he's directly behind one terrorist guy and it's like porn music starts playing because like it's like that it's that energy. Yeah, so like the terrorist tries at Goliath with his gun, mm -hmm. but Goliath catches it and he flexes, he breaks the gun in half. It's all this stuff that we love. Um, Brendan immediately screams, It's a monster, which makes me wonder because the last time we saw Goliath, it like. Did Goliath, like, leave an ass print in his car or something? Or, like, step on his car to climb up a building? Yeah. What the yeah. fuck happened? Yeah, something that was during Halloween. Like he, like, yeah. bounced off the Yeah, which wasn't that long ago. You think they'd be used yeah. to this shit by now. <laughs> because they keep dealing with it. But they're, every time they're like, oh my god, what the fuck? It's a monster. Like, this is your fourth or third time. Mm -hmm. Get over it. Well, you never get over seeing Goliath's ass, like, close up. Oh god, yeah. that's for sure. Well, there's, like, 18 guys, though, and they're all shooting. So Jal is, like, dodging around, using his, like, barely covered butt as a target. So, like, they all stay focused on him. Um, and that's when the trio suddenly come through the ceiling and drop down. These they guys. come through this, the this ceiling. This is a maneuver. How do they know where to drop? I, they, you know, they're in rare form today. They had it planned out. They're, they're, they're real crime fighters. Look, at this point in the show, they should be, they, they, they're... 
they're professionals. At they this are. Shit. They're pros. They're awesome. Mm, they've well, learned. Well, I would like to point out that if you uh, go frame by frame through through them breaking down the jumping down, uh-huh. there is a frame <laughs> where Brooklyn's um, loincloth is just going straight up in the air. Oh, really? You should, yeah. You should send that to us. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't it's that. one of, because it's like that. It, it is shown with him having something underneath for once. He doesn't have like, no. He doesn't oh have. Oh my gosh! It would that's be very like, easy to edit that frame into something else. That's I'm like such a saying. classical. That's like <laughs> such a classical <laughs> Disney concept. Is like oh oh their loincloth is up. Oh, just draw like weird like brown underwear underneath it. Yeah. That's what they did in like in the Tarzan movie. Like he's completely naked under there, and you can tell. He should be. Yeah. But in the show, they definitely just have this like like need mm. to always have that brown underwear in case any nudity slips yeah, through. Yeah, we don't want to see the, the animation. Know, we don't want the kids to see naked men or anything. The, Unless the, they read the Dark Souls comic, in which case they can see as many naked men as they want. I remember watching like the really bad George of the Jungle 2 sequel um, without <laughs> Brendan Fraser, and there's a frame where I can see like the guy's ball sack when he's oh. on his like vine. Oh God, um, maybe I should find that for I, it, Like, I remember, um, it was very strange for me because, like, I wasn't even sure I liked guys yet. And then I'm just like, oh my God, now this guy's fucking ball sack is in this oh, kid's movie. Oh my goodness. And then, then you knew from that point on. It was, no, guys. this was not my awakening. Oh, never mind. You were like, ugh. George disgusting. Showerman's ball sack in the George <gasps> of the Jungle 2 sequel was not my sexual awakening. Okay, well, we'll, we'll keep trying but it was, find it's out worth it really mentioning, was. I feel, <laughs> given the topic at hand. So as, the, as all this is happening, the leader, she, like, goes to seal herself inside the vault, but Delive, like, gets to the door before she can finish closing it, and, like, he follows her in. And he, like, he literally, like, jump kicks her, like, to the floor. He's not playing right now. Um, so she starts begging for her life. She's like, don't hurt me. And he just, like, he looks at her in, like, pure disdain. And it's just like, you have more to fear from your own cowardice than me. Um, and so that about wraps things up with this little fight. He, um, we come back. We see the trio. They're putting the terrorists in, like, <laughs> these sacks. And they're, like, closing... The they're like cinching like the drawstrings on them so like only their heads are showing <laughs> and their bodies are just sort of like wiggling inside the, like we only see it for a second but I'm just like I'm glad that the trio are finally getting to like all the bondage part in the show like they get to tie someone else up for once and like Brooklyn you can clearly see like he's getting into it he has like this expression on his face that like that like bondage sadist expression you know the one I mean he learned a lot of things about himself that day. He, yes. I don't know which day. All Every time he's been tied up, which has been quite a few by now. A lot of this show is just Brooklyn's, like, kink awakening, like, electrocution, <laughs> and now he finds out he's in the bondage. Like, it's mm-hmm. only a matter of time. Yeah, you know. Um, but then Lexington, he approaches the hostages, and he's like, relax, folks, you're safe now. And Brendan immediately screams, get away. And Gosh. then, I shit you not. He hides behind Margo and like pushes her in front of him. <laughs> so like this is revenge for when she locked him out of the car. That yes, like this is why they're together because they are both like this. Gosh. They both deserve each other. They're so awful. This is a toxic marriage. Are they married? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I'm yeah. pretty sure they're married. It's I, I... pretty well confirmed at this point. Yeah, but um. I have nothing to add to that. No, I mean, what is there to say? And Brooklyn's just like, he's in total sarcasm mode. He's like, don't gush all over us, okay? It's kind of embarrassing. See, I kind of like that. It's just like, About okay. gushing well... all over Brooklyn? Well, no, but... <laughs> no, he's just being, like, cocky about it. Like, yeah, whatever, you guys are scared of us. We, we did our job. I don't care. They should do the thing that they did in Awakening and just, like, go, like, ooda booda booda while, like, waving their arms <laughs> around and see just how, like, if Brennan... Yeah, were, but like, that got them themselves. in trouble, but it did inadvertently save their lives. Uh, yeah, I did get them spanked by Goliath back in the day. Oh, that too. Mm-hmm. But, so Goliath, he comes back out, like, carrying the leader, who is looking, like, traumatized beyond belief right now. And he just, like, drops her on the floor and doesn't even bother tying her up. And she just, like, she just, like, grabs hold of her knees and just, like, rocks back and forth with, like, this terrified expression on her face. Um, 
And Jalive's like, okay, like, we're done. The police can deal with these clowns. Um, but then these the three creepy girls step up and they say, let's see, the cause is everything and her own life is threatened. Still, it's good that you saved her. And another one says, if you forget what she's forgotten, that every life is precious, then you'll be no different from her. And Jalive's like, I don't know who you are, child, but I'll never be like this terrorist. And then they just say, we weren't talking about this terrorist. And then they're just fucking gone. Like, Delilah looks back, <laughs> they're not there anymore. And he's like, what the fuck? Happened? That's a valid reaction. And of course, Brendan and Margaret are like, there was no one there. Yeah, what they're like, yeah, what children? And they're like, please, there were no children. But Don't didn't, hurt us. Didn't the children, like, talk to them earlier saying it would be okay, over but, soon? But, but Margaret didn't react to it. So, oh, like, so what was the point of them to, you know what? They're I don't weird. know what the point they're of weird. the children they're, talking about. The was. weird sisters. They're weird. They, are the, they are the weird they're sisters. They're weird. Yes. So speaking of the weird sisters, I have to ask. Oh, yes. What is your opinion on the weird sisters in Gargoyles versus the weird sisters in Sandman? They're similar. Man, Would you like me to talk? I'm I mean, always going to give one of you the Okay, mask. well, I don't... Okay, because I... Hiran, we've just started watching the Sandman TV series on Netflix, yeah. and you have not read the comics, so I don't want to spoil oh, okay, future storylines. Um, the Fates, or the Furies, or the Weird Sisters, or whatever you want to call them, the three-in-one, um, they're going to be doing a lot of things in Sandman, and they oh. are a much more like powerful entity in that universe. And they'll turn out to be in Gargoyles, where they're just like more members of the third race. Yeah. Um, Oberon's children, but like, yeah, like they, you know, they have the similar vibe when they yeah. show up in this show as they do in Sandman. Like, they definitely do. Okay. Um, okay. So Delia's like, where are the children? Brett and Margaret are like, we don't know. And then Brooklyn comes over and he starts like feeling the ground where they, did you notice this? He's like, <laughs> where are they? He's like touching <laughs> the floor. I'm just like, well, they're not on the floor, Brooklyn. I, I don't know why. He's a he's professional. Looking, he's looking for an escape panel that they disappeared something. through. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so the Dargos are like, okay, well, if they if there weren't children here, then, like, what did we actually see? And then Goliath's like, and who were they talking about? Um, smash cut to Demona, <laughs> just in case you didn't know who they were talking about. Um, and she, okay... This is, like, the happiest we're ever going to see Demona in this entire show. She is merrily winning her way through the city yeah. um, with a, a page from a, a book, I guess, in from hand. The grim- from the grim- From the grim- From the grim- devious grim- raccoonists. Grim- yeah. Yeah. There's some jaunty music playing. Like, she, she is pleased as apple pie at the moment. So, just as a reminder for anyone who doesn't remember. She tore remember. three pages from the grim... Are grim- you going to... Yes. <laughs> During episode seven, I want to say. Uh, where Brooklyn was a love struck fool yes mm-hmm. so we're finally following up on that plot thread after all this time yes although i don't think they confirmed that in any way in this episode but like we know though because Grex told us he, and i mean she she does mention that they're from the arcanorum but i'll okay when we get to that part i'll have some thoughts on that that's i'm fair. gonna say some words about that part that's fair. Um, but to explain her good mood that she's in, we then do a flashback to her entire clan being murdered. <laughs> um, so, oh gosh, the <laughs> angst. So, okay, we see like a scene from Awakening Part 1 where Demona and the gay captain of the guard, do you remember the captain of the guard? Our, yeah. our favorite. We're still in sad, didn't get a name. Yeah, but he, he's only captain of the guard. Then they're trying to convince Goliath to like, take the clan out and chase the Vikings who have retreated. Um, but Goliath, like, doesn't want to, so he just ends up taking, like, him and Hudson, blah, blah, blah. Like, we've been here before. Um, but as Goliath leaves, this time the scene continues, so we get to hear, like, the rest of the conversation. Um, and also the animation quality notably dips as soon as we get to new footage, but, like, you know, it's a wait thing. It's hard to compete with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing, Demona ages, like, yeah! 40 years. And I know... It's because the animator for this episode, like, got her models confused. Because we do see older Demona later in this episode. And they yeah. they got it mixed up with, like, in which shots she's supposed to be old Demona and which she's supposed to be, like, like young Demona. Mm-hmm. But it's just funny, like, to see her, like, flip back and forth, like, within the same yeah. scene. She's multiple times. The Benjamin Button disease. <laughs> <laughs> or she went to, like, the old beach. The, the beach where you turn old. What is that movie? Oh, gosh. <laughs> 
old. By Is M. that M. just Night- the name? <laughs> yeah, it's by M. Night Shyamalan. But, okay, so she and the Captain Vidar basically, like, spell out their actual plan, which was to have the gargoyles, like, all leave the castle and chase the Vikings. Except the Vikings actually come back to the castle while they were gone kill question mark all the humans enslave them i don't know take the humans away and then the dark girls come back to an empty castle and they're like oh well, i guess we'll just be here without any humans and have better lives mm-hmm. that's basically their plan uh which obviously won't work anymore because goliath didn't take all the other dark girls with him um except the captain of the jar is a fucking dumbass and is like no it'll be, it can still work i'll, I'll just call my boyfriend, Hakon, who, like, I actively let fuck me, like, every night. And I'll just ask him to, like, attack nicely during the day. And to not destroy all the gargoyle statues that are around. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll do it. Because, you know, he loves me. We're an item. We're, we're been in Time Magazine as couple of the year. It's gonna go great. And Demora's like, I don't think it will. But then she just, like... She ad- I don't know why the fuck she agrees, but she does agree at some point. She's like, okay, we'll try it your way. Um, and so she obviously still thinks it is a bad plan, because she immediately does, like, Cold Stone and Desdemona, who, like, we get a little cameo of. Yeah, we not oh. only um, Cold Stone, but both Cold Stones, because they're, like, technically the same person in the future. Well, this right. is Othello, technically. Othello and Desdemona. But, but yeah. Whatever their stupid name. names are. Yeah, I don't um, know. They're Cold Stone. And she's, like, she's trying to, like warn them about what's going to happen but then like she spots some vikings who are like literally just strolling up to the castle as she's trying to talk to them and she's just like never mind <laughs> and she just like flies <laughs> away are you fucking kidding me <laughs> like like the, the, a lot could have been probably avoided if she t- I mean, I don't know. Like, this, I don't understand her decisions in, like, any of this flashback. Y- she done <laughs> fucked up is what she did. Just, like, she seriously. done screwed the pooch. She she fucked up. So, like, the sun is coming up at this point. So, like, she flies down to, like, like the sea cliffs, like, underneath where the castle is. Um, and so, like, she sleeps there during the day. But, like, you can already see in her eyes, like, she knows that she fucked this up. Um, and then there's, like, there's this absolutely gorgeous shot of the sunlight, like, working its way up her body as the mm-hmm. sun is rising. And, like, you see each part of her turning to stone as it's, like, being hit. And then, like, the last shot is, like, her face. And she, like, she weeps a single emo tear she does as, as she turns tear. to stone. Yeah. Like, and it's, like, interspersed with, like, more clips of, from Awakening of, like, the Vikings attacking and, like, smashing the gargoyles. Um, so, like, it's really fucking good, though. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it works. Mm-hmm. Um, Bobo. Bobo. No, Bobo. Don't you be barking. Don't you be barking. Don't be a barker. Don't be a little... Don't no, hey, a... oh, oh. Don't. Where's I the... see that defiance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I saw his stance. I saw mm-hmm. I heard his lowercase, and yeah. I knew. Okay, so uh, let's pick up where we left off. I hope you keep all of that in. Oh, I uh, could. <laughs> the following night, we, we see her wake up. And at first, she's happy because she looks up. She sees smoke coming from the castle. And she's like, oh, like our plan worked. Um, and then she like, she like climbs up. And that's when she starts finding body parts. Like... A lot mm-hmm. of body parts, in particular gargoyle body parts, because mm-hmm. there's all these stone mm-hmm. fragments all over the castle of arms. Like she picks up like a face, which is um, cold stone. Is it cold stone's face? Yes, yeah. Yes, oh. and, yeah. And like I feel like this experience is the kind of memory that might stick with someone for like a thousand years or so. Yeah, I uh, know. Because like yeah. Um, Trauma. Yeah, so, like, she starts just sobbing. Um, it goes back to her old model again for this scene. Like, her, like, older-looking model. But, like, I think it's because she's so distraught. She looks just, like, ages. Um, and then she sees Goliath. She, he's flying back to the castle. Like, he did at the end of that first episode. Um, but she can't face him right now. Because, like, she's responsible for all of this. It's basically her fault. 
Mm-hmm. So she just she runs away. She lets him angst. Yeah, she lets him angst because he thinks that she's dead too. Like we like she sees him picking up like <laughs> other gargoyle body parts and like think it's her. She and made start, like, so many bad screaming. decisions. Like this is like a Shakespearean tragedy. Oh at this point. my they gosh! Both, like you know what I mean? Like yeah. she's she's letting him believe that he's dead, or you know what? She's letting him believe that she's dead. Um. And then she's going to come back later, and he's going to be dead. Like, what? this is Romeo and Juliet. Okay, Korea. okay. So, like, she's like, I'll just make it seem like I came back. And then time passes, and it's just like, then she comes back. But, like, what the fuck was going on during that time pass? Was she just looking for a decent spot to trail back? And then, like... Cause... She was probably, she was finalizing her story. Because the, the story she's trying to give is that she had gone out after Goliath. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, she got, like, caught out, like, in the daytime. And it was only, like you know, now that she'd be able to come back to the castle. Um, which is, and, and then she says, like, he'll be so glad I'm alive that he won't question me further, which I, like, is 100% true. Like, that is how yeah, he would react. Yeah. I am, like, very positive that she's correct on that mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just sort of sucks that, like, I feel like this plan would have worked, except the fucking Magus had to fucking... Yeah, yeah there fucking was no way, that was, was not a bad decision on her part, there's no way she could have predicted that happening. No. No. Uh, oh my! I hate the Magus. Have I uh, yeah, mentioned no, that? Yeah, no, the Magus <laughs> is a piece of shit. Like he's just a fucking twink, magic bitch that does things because he's racist against gargoyles. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, but she she flies back, and and now she's like she sees Goliath and the others, and they are turned to stone during the day, and she's like, what? Um, and like she, you know, like we see her low from from confusion to horror, then like to anger, and she delivers like the iconic line to me, which like is her entire character. She says, "What have I?" And then she changes it mid sentence and says, "What have they done to you?" Mm, mm-hmm. Just you know, years of redirecting the blame to cope with the trauma mm, of your yeah. own decisions. You know, I mean, like it's what you do. It's what you do. You know. Um, and she also, she also she's the Magus and Princess Catherine and and our boy Sweet Tom, and they're loading all the gargoyle eggs into a cart, and they're just like they're just fucking off. We don't know where the fuck they're even going. They're, they, you know, we, but, uh, we know I know where they're going. Where are they well, going? We know where they're going now. But, but we don't we don't know where they're going now in the show. I don't remember. Where they're I'm going. not going to spoil. it. I know they end up in Avalon somehow, but I don't remember how they get there. <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> happens before then. But moving on, we'll discuss that when we get to that episode. Yeah, we will. Um, Cause that's that that is just a flash forward to a different episode. Yes. Flash back. Oh my god. Yeah, because that's in like the timey wimey episodes, right? Yeah. With the archmage and yeah. all that shit. Um, but she doesn't. Okay, so she doesn't follow the, these humans taking all these gargoyle eggs, and I don't know why she doesn't follow them at this point. Because like the gargoyle eggs, like does she feel responsible for them? Apparently she doesn't. One I think she. She's worried that she'll destroy, destroy them. Destroy them, like she destroyed everyone else. Yeah. Like, just yeah. Worthy of She's motherhood. pretty fucking, like, messed up with all the recent trauma that's been, like, imposed onto her. She's not in a good mental state, and that's it. Yeah, but, I mean, it also, you know, what, we, we, we do know that one of those eggs is hers. At least two of them, right? Because yeah. isn't, isn't Gabriel also Gabriel's her son? Gabriel's also her son. There's I Gabriel forgot. and Angela. Oh my gosh, okay, I forgot Gabriel was even related to her. Okay. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I'm almost positive he is. So wait, is Gabriel Goliath's son then? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they had two eggs, at least. Well, Goliath's just a big old daddy, ain't he's, he? He's a cum factory. But, yeah. <laughs> God, she, she milked that poor man uh, dry. I mean, <laughs> as it is, though, like, gargoyles don't think about the individual eggs as whether or not they're theirs. They all belong to the clan as a whole. So yeah, but, but like, you know, she, she sees the the next generation just leaving and, like, does not try to hold on to it. Uh, mm. And possibly because she's already planning to go on a roaring rampage of revenge and doesn't want the kids along anyway for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We don't really know. But all we see is there's another fucking, there's a beautiful shot of her climbing up to, like, Goliath's statue and she kisses her fingers and then presses them against his lips. Uh, the music swells. Like, there's violins. Everything in this episode works. The The soundtrack is almost like a freaking um, a Wagner, like, orchestral um, yeah. sort of, like... Like it kind of reminds me of Tristan Undi Sold, which is like mm. a which is like an opera about like 
pretty much like the whole Romeo and Juliet romance, but like in a in, in its own story. I forget the right. specifics in particular. I mean, if I had more time, I probably would have taken notes, but I forgot to just do that. But, but um, that's what it reminded me of. Is very gorgeous, just um, soundscapes yeah. is what I'm trying to get at. Okay, Demona was crying over the light statue. And then, like, the single tear comes down, and she presses her head against him. Yeah, and, like, it drips from her face onto his stone face. Right, Right. and then she flies off, and it comes down, and it runs as if he's the one crying Uh as she flies away. Because symbolism. It's so good. It's wild. Like, it's 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 really good. Really good. (laughs) Um, And, like, I feel like at this moment, like... These this set of episodes is a really good job of like showing like Demona isn't a pure evil person, mm-hmm. and like her her love for Goliath is one of the ways that they show it. Because like at this moment she cares as much for him as like he cared for her. Because like he he killed himself rather than live like without her. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this case she she handles her grief differently than him. Like, what, whereas he focuses it, like, inward in, like, a self-destructive way, she's focusing it outward, because she's going to go and fuck some people up, is how she's going to handle it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, there's a lot of just really interesting, um, character introspective going on with the, especially, you know, with the City of Stone art, because Demona is such an intriguing character, because we're finally yeah, getting we're her... finally learning, yeah, because mm-hmm. we, we haven't known about her what her real backstory her, was. Her point of view from everything. Yeah. Why she is the way she is now. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it's just, like, characters coping with the decisions they make. And like you said, Goliath is more self-destructive. Um, I think Goliath, you know, um, he learned how to, like, heal because he was surrounded by the right people. Mm-hmm. Um, Demona didn't have anyone and she you know and partly she never sought out anyone to help her heal with this she just kind of yeah well like we're gonna see like even when she does other gargoyles around her late in this episode like she's not using them for healing purposes like she's using them as another weapon for her own hate and like mm-hmm. not allowing them to like not try healthy. to help her at all really <laughs> uh so cut to i don't know some span of time later and we see this little bitch coming out of the house. This little peasant bitch. And he's named Gilcom Game. Oh, gosh. And he's complaining about his life. Which, given it is the 10th century, it probably does suck. <laughs> and he is a peasant. So, like, mm-hmm. I feel you, Gilcom Dane. But he's going out back. to He's going to milk the cows or whatever. But on the way, he hears what sounds like, like some ferocious animal, like, in the barn attacking the animals, the livestock. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he drops his bucket, he races in, he drops a pitchfork on the way, and, like, I do feel bad for him, because it's not like he's doing anything no. wrong here. Uh, but, he, you know, he's just made the mistake of coming across Demona, and he's gonna pay for it. Yeah. Uh, so, she's in there, she's stealing food, because she looks like she's starving at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, he points a pitchfork at her, and then she retaliates by just slashing the hell like out of his fucking face and we see the cows and the horses they're all freaking out like this is a this is an intense episode mm-hmm. yeah. um and she just says that'll teach you humans to betray us before like just she takes a massive bite out of her apple like <laughs> <laughs> um and like he wasn't even there but like she you know she's painting all humans with the same brush now yeah yeah she's definitely not in a good mental state right now no. like this is the worst time to like encounter her mm-hmm. which you know this guy did yeah and as as she leaves we just see him like his he's like holding his hands over his face and we just see like blood trickling out between yeah. his fingers uh like it's it's incredible like mm-hmm. i'm still amazed that like the censors were like no this is fine yeah <laughs> Because, like, like, they don't show it, but, like, we know exactly what happened. And, like, even, you know, children are going to know what happened, but it's it's fine, I guess, as long as you don't directly do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I love it. And, okay, a- as I was watching this episode, I went and looked up his age. He was 12 years old when this happened to him. Oh, like, so, okay. So... <laughs> you know, that's probably explains the trauma a little better. Uh-huh. Um, 
So I guess that's why she was so happy as she was gliding before. Just as as we come back, I just she was remembering. Oh yeah, that time I just figured a child. That was like the best day of my life. <laughs> she loved it. Um, but we come back to her flying through the city, and and she goes to a location that's dear to all of our hearts, which is Pack Media Studios. Yeah, our favorite place. Which of course we know that Xanatos owns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So inside, we see our wonderful friends, Xanatos and Owen, um, just talking about how, how they're all set for what they're going to do next. Um, and Demona just says, you had better be, as she comes in, because she cannot enter any location without giving some bitchy one-liner to like whatever they were talking about inside. Mm-hmm. This is a pattern with her. It's true. So Xanatos, he's just like, relax. Uh, they have all this television equipment there that can override... You know, every broadcast channel in the city. Cable as well, quips Owen. Um, and then Xantos asks if she has kept her end of the bargain. And she unrolls the paper she was carrying and says, yes, uh, this is how she's lived all these years. Um, a spell that she stole from the Thievius Raccoonus, <laughs> which it steals a minute of life from every person seeing and listening to the spell. Um... So the plan they have to do this, it's actually rather ingenious. They're going to broadcast her reciting the spell on television and then, like, loop it for the whole day to get as many people watching as they can. Um, and I just, like, everyone in, like, the New York City area will be seeing this on their televisions. Um, I just I think it's neat when they fuse, like, magic and technology on this show. It's something they yeah. do really well, and I liked it. Yeah. Um, so I looked it up. In 1995... There were almost 17 million people living in the city. So if you... Assuming they got most of them, that adds up to about 34-ish years that they can then, like, divide between themselves. Um, so, you know, that's pretty good. That's, of course, assuming Demona isn't lying out her ass to them about what the spell is going to do. Hmm. But what are the chances that she would do that? No, I don't... That's... <laughs> yeah, she's, she's pretty good for it, I think, you know. But, okay, but here's my question... Because we know that, from the beginning, we should know this is a lie that she said. Because we saw her steal the pages from the Grimorum Arcanorum in that episode that you mentioned before, Hiran. So, yeah. like, so how, how are we supposed to believe that she's lived this long through using that spell when she only just got it, pretty much? Unless she had stolen it before? Well, the, previously, as well? Well, the Grimorum Arcanorum was um, originally hers. Did she have it? So we are. We know for a fact from the radio plays. Oh my god! I haven't listened to the radio plays. That back in, or actually no, also Hunter's Moon. Okay. Remember back a hundred years ago during the, the the flashbacks in Hunter's Moon, she had in France. She had the more Mark and back then. Is that when the guy was like on like the Leonardo da Vinci yes. like flying machine after her, and she had the book? Okay, I vaguely remember that scene. Right. Okay. So we know she's had it. So she has had it in the past. I okay. think we know from Greg that she's the one who gave it to Xanatos, who then had it stolen by Goliath. Right. Because she gave it to him so that he could use so that he could use it to break the spell. Right. Okay. It, it it all makes perfect sense. There's a okay. lot. There, there's always a lot with this goddamn yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot, Greg. This is, this is what happens when you're talking about a magic item that has literally 1,000 years of history. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, okay. This plan is going to go great. They're all very trusting. Um, so trusting that uh, Z- Xanatos pulls Owen aside and is like, okay, you can watch this spell or you can listen to it. But, like, do not do both. And Owen's like... Right. (laughs) It's also very funny that, like, it's just Xenatos and Owen here, and and Owen's the one operating, like, this entire television studio by himself. I just... He's a man of many talents. He can do anything. He's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, So Xenatos just leaves. Um, So she starts chanting, and Owen's, like, filming her, but then he realizes something's wrong. He's like, whoa, this is not the spell you said you were going to cast, which is... If you've been paying attention, you might find it interesting that Owen instantly recognized yeah. his, like, magic spells. Hmm, um, suspicious. But she, she summons this, like, wind that, like, slams him around. And then she, like, makes, like, lightning bondage gear, basically. That, like, ties him to a chair. Um, and, like, and he's, like, frozen in place, apparently. And she just says, 
you are the tricky one. So we'll just make sure you stay put. Which is, like, another, like, giant clue as to yes. who Owen, like, really is without yes. saying who he is. Um, but she, like, she ties him up. Because, mm-hmm. of course, they just have ropes in this television studio. Right, Because uh, it's Xanatos' studio, and he has to be ready for bondage at any time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she, she just sets the recording to, like, you know, to start looping, and then she leaves. Yeah, you know. She's going to go about her day. She's living her life. Hell yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Good for her. Then we see Elisa's apartment. Uh, she's watching something on TV, but then it switches to Demona's spell. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what the fuck is this? And she tries to change the channel, but it's on every channel, which I feel like every 90s cartoon I like how this happen. her first instinct was upon cha- Was to be like, I don't want to look at Demona. TV. Let me change the Nickelodeon. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, like, you know, questioning the logic of her being on TV was, like, the second thing after changing the channel. Yeah. Uh, but at least she rushes out, because, like, obviously something's going on. Um, and as her car zooms down the street, we see three interesting-looking young women. Um, there's one with blonde hair, mm. one with black hair, and one with white hair. Hmm. And they introduce themselves with dialogue. Uh, one says, isn't this exciting, Luna? It begins again. And the other says, concentrate, sister, or it will end here as well. Then the last one says, Phoebe, Celine, have patience. We've waited 975 years. We can wait a little longer. So we know their names. So now. we have yes, we have Luna, Phoebe, and Celine, which are all very witchy names. Mm. Except for Phoebe, wasn't she a Friends character? Phoebe was kind of a witch in Friends. Oh, was she? Maybe yeah. she's the same person. She was like she she <laughs> swore to Lucifer in one episode. Oh my! She was definitely my favorite character That's in that awesome. show. Well, too. I'm glad that she is a member of the Weird Sisters. <laughs> I would love Lisa Kudrow playing, like, the live-action version of the Weird Sisters in some variation. I haven't mentioned what they're wearing, but they're in, like, insane outfits. Oh, yeah. Um, Like, completely purple from head to toe. And, like, it looks like, I don't know, latex, maybe? They have mini skirts, uh, skin-tight leggings. They're all showing, like, midriff. Mm Mm-hmm. They're in, like, like, sexy mode. They look good. They look damn good. Yeah. They're, they're you know, no, they're it's, the uh, it's uh, Girls Night Out. Girls Night GNO, Out. GNO, let's go, yeah. you know? The mm-hmm. midriff's out, moon's out. <laughs> Fuck yeah. It's the witching hour. Oh my god, the witching hour. Yeah, they're gonna binge watch Twitches. Yes! On Disney+. Plus. I thought they fucking love Twitches. That I love Twitches. That's I love... It's a good movie. <laughs> in my... In my I, I liked it. I have never seen it. We'll watch it together sometime. Oh, God. <laughs> but, okay, so from there, from here we proceed into our next flashback. There are so many flashbacks. Not only in this episode, but, like, every episode of this of this four-parter. But we see a group of soldiers. But we're now in, we're now in uh, 1020 AD, which is 26 years after Awakening. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are some soldiers. One of them has a beautiful mustache. I thought he was hot. I'm just going to put it out there. He was a good-looking guy. At one point, there's like an extreme close-up on his face. He's very handsome, um, but they're being attacked by gargoyles, who just like swoop down, and, like put them in a net. Basically, yeah. there's just you know just incidental bondage. It's like it's not good bondage, but it's bondage. Um, so they're just like, oh no, the gargoyles they got us. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Demona's clan, which like. We're barely going to see in this show, but I love all of them. Gosh, it's so much. I wish um, there was more exploration. We immediately did, did, did a crotch shot on one of them, because he lands, like, right in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. And it's like, he's he's the beefy boy. He's probably my favorite. He's, yeah. like, a, he's like a ram guy. He's got mm-hmm. he's got a nice body. He's very muscular. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has, like, a chest plate thing. Yeah. And there's, we also see one who looks like, like an off-color Brooklyn, who... May or may not be Brooklyn's brother. Um, according to Remy, I think we talked about this a few months ago when he was talking about the city of Stone Arc. Um, that is, in fact, Brooklyn's brother. So did his brother not live at Castle Wyvern, I guess? Uh, correct. Okay. So, th- so th- what happened was, uh, roughly, if I remember correctly, and Remy's probably going to end up correcting me on the timelines, about 20 years prior to the events of Awakening, uh-huh. the... Um, 
the clan, I forget what the, their actual name at the time was, was getting too big. Okay, I just said they, like, they split. So they splintered, and par- half of the clan stayed at Castle Wyvern, mm-hmm. and half of them moved off to a different castle. Okay. Um, the gargoyles that Demona is with now are fr- all from that splinter right. group. Right, okay. It's actually not half and half, it's more like, I, I think only like a third of them were in the splinter group, but... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, you know, he's he's looking good, Brooklyn's bro. He's he'll, He just looks like an older Brooklyn, basically. And, yeah, like, like a grayer beefy, one. Um, slightly beefier. Than yeah, no, he, he, there's a couple <laughs> uh, good scenes, or good, like, uh, split-second, like, frames coming of him in the coming episodes, I believe. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so, okay, so the soldiers in the net, they just kind of watch as, like, the gargoyles break into the silo and steal some food. They're outside a silo, by the way. Um, and as the gargoyles are leaving, one of them goes, The hunter will wipe your thieving kind off the face of this earth. Mm. And then we see an older, an extremely badass looking Demona show up and says, Not while I live. She's scary. Like, and like, the way she's older, like, her face is sagging, but her boobs are still perfect. Well, obviously, she, she, looks amazing. she older women can be fit. Yeah, and she is. Mm-hmm. She looks gorgeous. Um, oh, but she definitely murders these guards. Just, like, oh, we see yeah. Her lift, the, a spiked mace lift up. They all scream, and then we just see the mace go down. So, like, that's all we need to see to know what happened. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Another on-screen death that just made it right past the censors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so good. Um... But that's not important right now. So we go to Demona's little cave hideout where we see all her gargoyles hanging out. Uh, they're having a little feast. The conditions I would describe as squalid because Demona's in charge and she's more about like killing humans and punishing them than like mm-hmm. actually helping her people, I feel like. Yeah. But yeah. we see a lot of really good designs which and it just kind of sucks because I know we're barely going to see most of them again, but like there's a dull good looking gargoyles here. Yeah. Um the beefy one who I mentioned before with the ram horns, uh the camera sort of lingers on him as he like gets some food and like sits against the wall and he's having some bread. But then he starts <laughs> wait, pitching. Wait, I need to point out this line in your notes that just says, Mmm, I love okay, bread. I wasn't gonna, okay. <laughs> if you've ever read my notes, I like to have many notes to myself I love, just as I'm That's going. like so cute And though. you weren't supposed to see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I have a line in here about Xanatos me explaining to Owen about magic that I never never made it out. So. Oh my God, you have to start just interrupting me and I, tell your little jokes. Usually I do, but that, that one, we went through that scene so fast I didn't get a chance to I put to in my notes on. in all caps at one point, Demona said among us. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyway. I think that's in this scene coming up. <laughs> so, okay, the beefy guy who's eating bread, and by the way, I love bread, in case you guys didn't know that I do mm. love bread. But he just starts bitching, because, like, their lives suck ass. And he starts going, like, why don't we just make peace with the humans? At which Demona goes over, takes him up by his, the chest plate, which is, like, the only thing he has on his upper body, mm-hmm. and she just, like, chucks him across the entire fucking cave. Um, and he lands with his legs spread, like, wide open. Because, yeah. of course, he does. This is Gargoyles. Uh. <laughs> so, Hiram just showed me his notes, which yeah. says, Demona manhandling that hot gargoyle. I love it. Comma, She's a yum. fat dom, you know. <laughs> he, looks, he looks fantastic getting manhandled. I'll yeah. say that about him. He's living up to Goliath's name. Um, I wonder if she's, like, ridden him like she rides Goliath. Is he, like, her little man toy that she has around? I don't know. I wish he had a name, but yeah. of course, you know, gargoyles don't believe in names at this point, so yeah, we'll never yeah. know what it is. Uh, but she says, Do you think the humans want peace? We are all that are left of our kind in this world, and the hunter begrudges each of us our lives. I will not let him win. And just then, some random bitches show up, and they say, Oh, the hunter? Yeah, we know about him. So... We, th- we see three wizened gargoyle women. Um, there's one with blonde hair, one with black hair, and one with white hair. 
hmm, suspicious. I don't know what you could mean by that. Mm. And so they just say, the hunter stalks a new human target at Castle Moray. If you and Clan Moray ally against your common enemy, you can defeat him. To which Demona is like, ally with humans. Uh, how about I let the hunter kill whoever the fuck he's gonna kill, and then I just kill him after he does that. And the other gargoyles are like, oh yeah, I guess that'll work too. <laughs> like, no one argues. They're like, yeah, that's a good plan. Because, she, you know, she's girl boss. Yeah, of course. Naturally. Okay, and now we come to my least favorite part of this episode. Because there's like a thousand uh-huh. new characters and they have the most boring conversations yeah. imaginable. I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as I can. Uh, so we go to Castle Moray, where we see a bunch of humans. Um, but, so basically... We see two hot dads. Yeah, of course. And they're they're two kids. So they're setting up with each other. Mm Because the two dads are fucking each other. And they also want their children to fuck each other. So the money stays in the family. Exactly. Yes. I'm glad that you're with me on this. (laughs) Um, That's just how it works. You know, to intertwine their houses. You know, their own sweaty lovemaking. Like, it hasn't been enough. They need, like, their children to also get married. Um... So, okay, and these guys, they're, these are all, like, real-life historical figures, too, apparently. Yeah, At least, I know that, like, the dads and Macbeth are. I don't know if Gruach is. Well, the, um, the girl is, too. She, okay, everyone is. The girl's Lady Macbeth. Well, yeah, I, okay, but, like, well, I don't know if Gruach and Lady Macbeth, because Gruach and Lady Macbeth are radically different. In, like, Shakespeare's Lady Macbeth, I mean. Well, yeah, but... So, like, I don't know, like, how much is history and how much is fiction. So... The funny thing about this is, despite having, you know, flying gargoyles going around and random people in masks mm-hmm. running around with swords, this is much more historically accurate than Shakespeare's version. Uh, that, that sounds typical for fucking gargoyles. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, um, the only person who, who said anything about it to the writers was um, Macbeth's actor, who saw the script and was like... Oh, John Reese davies He's like... Why? What's with all this revisionism? Oh, and, and they were like, "It's not revisionism, bitch." Like basically, that. Yeah. yes. <laughs> but like, actually, we just went and used the r- actual historical yeah. events as a basis. Ever look at a of... history book, motherfucker? Um, the... I don't know why they're so aggressive in my imagination. <laughs> they probably, I mean, you know. So the the reason Shakespeare's is so far off, though, is because. Um, he wanted to make the current king look good, right? right. He was, like, descended from Macbeth or not something like Macbeth, that. Not from Macbeth, but from Macbeth's but from, enemy. From Banquo? Not or, from, well, he thought... Banquo was actually a fictional from, character. From somebody, but, yeah. Macduff? Like, yeah. Some, I, it's Basically, been a while. <laughs> the, the guy who ends up king at the end of Macbeth is... Right. Treated as a hero in that version because he's... Because Shakespeare was smart and wanted to keep his theater funded. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, I can't say much. I don't know much about the historical accuracy, but I, re- I know the play. I've read the play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a great play. But uh, almost all changes that do not involve the gargoyles are just to revert it back to mo- being more historically accurate. Mm. That's very funny to me. But okay, so these people all have Scottish names. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be pronouncing them right, but there's the one dad who I want to say is Findley? Finley? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> like what? F I N D L E Y. F I N D L A E C H. Except it's <laughs> Scottish pronunciations. So I don't know what any of those letters mean in our, you know, our coarse English tongue. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in, in the show, it sounds like they say Finley, but like honestly, I don't know. But anyway, he's the he's the steward of of Moray, the castle they're in. And his son is Macbeth, who, of course, we've met before. But we're seeing guy. him as a very earnest young man at this point in his history. Um, and then there's another dad whose name is Bodhi. Um, and, like, he's the hottest one in the room. I'm just going to say uh, this. What, is, very... is it the ginger guy? Yeah. Like, yeah. He has, like, a thick, like, red beard. He's... Yeah, I like his... Uh, his, his he's, he's got a thick everything, it looks like, actually. Yeah, yeah, he's a thick boy. <laughs> he looks very nice. And then there's his daughter, Gruach. Mm. Um, so they're all having like 
Like, they're having, like, sexy chess games, because, like, that's as steamy as they can get in the 10th century. I thought you said chest. And I'm like... No, chess. <laughs> Not chest games. Chess games. They play with each other's titties for yeah. fun. I can't well, believe I mean, it. you know, they've probably done all that, too. Oh, um, no. Are they playing strip chess? Maybe. Um, but Macbeth's dad damage. just got owned by Gruach, so, like, I don't, I don't know what's really happening here. I'm pretty sure that means he has a bottom for the night with Bodhi, the other dad. Um, I'm mm-hmm. trying to make this as entertaining as I can. No. This seems extremely boring. Yeah. There's straight people in it. All but... I put in this, like, scene from my notes, I was like, it blushy, goes on for so young, long. blushy I'm... Macbeth, ooh-ooh. Okay, we're not, okay, we, I'm gonna talk about that part when it happens. <laughs> just, 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 let's just put it this way. The adults talk a lot, then they get distracted when they notice their kids are flirting with each other. Go. Okay, but the way that they flirt with each other, it's like... You remember in a Goofy movie when Max Goof is helping um, Roxanne. The, Roxanne like pick up her papers and their fingers accidentally yeah. touch, and they both are like, "Oh, uh, we're in high school and our, our fingers touch." Oh, how uh. scandalous! Oh, Mister Fiddlesworth, you uh-huh. absolute scallywag! But Macbeth and Gruach do like the exact same yeah. thing while they're setting up like the chess game, and they're so turned on by their fingers touching. <laughs> But, like, they can't even play chess anymore. They just, like, stare across the table at each other, like, blushing. And be like, ah. Oh, Macbeth's I'm like, I've imagining. never touched another girl before mm-hmm. outside of my mother. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh-huh. So while that's happening, the two dads, they're, like, I don't know. They're giving each other hand jobs under the table. I don't know. They talk for a long time about, Gosh. like, the line of succession. And there's, like, some asshole named Duncan, who I guess is, like... Set to become the king. Duncan, that's the guy who the king's descended from. Okay, sure. Um, mm, yeah. But, like, I guess he's an asshole, but they've decided, like, to not care that he's an asshole. Because, like, what can you do? It's politics. Um, but, like, what? I didn't write any of that, anything else down. Because, like, it goes on for too long. Yes, yeah, let so me give boring. you the, the very brief <laughs> okay. cliff notes. I, you know, I should have had you do this part in yeah, the first place. Yeah, I don't know why you didn't. Um, so, very simply... Duncan's an asshole. He's destined to be king. Uh, they have two options. Either try and lead a coup again, to stop it because they don't uh-huh. want him to be king. Which they decide to not do. Or just be like, eh, whatever. He'll die sometime or other. And we'll get on with our lives. Gosh. They go with the latter. Well, I mean, what they should do if they were smart is just hire an assassin to kill him. Which is what Duncan's going to do to them. But, you know, Duncan's more on the ball with this, I think. Yeah, well, Duncan thinks that they are going to, in fact, try and do a coup. Yeah, so he strikes first, because, you know, he's, yeah. Yeah. Incorrectly, of course. Foolish man. But, so, okay, so all that happens. I'm sure that's going to be very important to someone. Um, But at some point, they're like, okay, we're all tired from, like, flirting and not fucking each other. So we're just going to go to bed now. And Macbeth's dad is like, yeah, it's like, show our guests to their rooms, boy. And, you know, Macbeth, everyone goes. Uh, Macbeth's dad stays behind to get drunk because, you know, he's going to be bottoming that night. He, mm-hmm. you know, he wants to be a little inebriated for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at some point he looks up and then outlined against the door frame is the hunter. <gasps> and now we're going to have the question. It's going to come up around 12 times in this four-parter. Who is the hunter? Who is he? Well, we're going to find out at the end of this episode. Yeah, but then we're going to get it again and again. Because it's always a again. different fucking person. <laughs> yes! <laughs> this, this is an all-purpose mess. Okay, so the Fine. hunter, he looks like an Assassin's Creed character, basically. He does. Like, he has a cape, he has a hood, and then, like, beneath the hood he has, like, this badass mask with, like, three bloody gashes across the face of it, like, like drawn on uh, who is he? Who is he? Yeah, yeah, who could it be? But he looks great. Uh, he has leggings, and he has, like, really nice legs, I'm just gonna say. Mm. Um, but he immediately goes on the offensive. He attacks Finley, and then Finney, he, like, he grabs a dinner plate. He starts, like, they're doing, like, a reprise of that scene from Sleeping Beauty, the Disney movie, where, like, the kings are fighting each other. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. One has a fish, the other's a plate. They go, like, on guard. It's... 
I thought it was like a shit. It is making like the funniest face right now of like what the fuck are you I know talking exactly about? Exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I thought it was a shield he grabbed off the wall. No, he's like, using no, just a plate that he has. Plays. Oh. Yeah. This is why the plate fucking breaks like in two seconds, because it's a plate. Oh, but he, then he doesn't he grab something else to deflect uh, the attacks? I don't know. I think he, he might. Because he deflects attacks for a while. I remember I'm like, how long is he just uh-huh. gonna like deflect these uh, it's wait are we talking about in the, the episode or in sleeping beauty now i'm not sure i'm talking about know. the episode i don't know uh, where sleeping beauty no, came from no no uh, it, it's a dinner plate theme it's it's like one of those metal serving trays it's not a plate it's a yeah. tray it doesn't matter <laughs> i'm gonna be all. honest everything in this scene because i don't know these characters i felt no attachment to any of them so it's mm-hmm. like i just kind of was like i know i didn't yeah you know like, we'll get attachment to some of them later like, but right, sort of. my only but right now, no. my only source of like saving grace was just like thinking about like slapping that like big ginger dude on the asshole Oh my god. I, yeah, do you think that Macbeth's dad, like, got some of that? No, nah, he had to. I mean, I, you know. I agree. I feel like back in those days, you know, it was just kind of, like, casual. You know, like, oh, exactly. oh, 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 I see you're wearing those, you know, garter stockings today. Yeah, the Mr. ones that, that symbolize that you're a bottom. <laughs> that sort of stocking. Yeah, I kind of like that. I don't know. I mean, I like it. It's... This, you could write a book out of that. Definitely. So as, okay, as he's watching these many sword strikes, uh, Macbeth's dad is like, You're the hunter. You're famous for hunting ass. But who sent you to hunt mine? And the hunter like just doesn't answer because he's, you know, he's serious business mode. But he does like, he kicks Macbeth's dad through a door, like out onto the balcony. Um, and like Macbeth like comes back during this, sees them fighting, and it's like, oh shit, like, he grabs two, like, swords that were just, like, on the wall. Um, he follows them out, let's see, um, he tries to throw one to his father, but the hunter is like, how about I just hit that off the balcony instead? Uh, so it goes flying, so now it's like, it's just Macbeth versus the hunter as, like, the two people with swords in this scene. Um, and they're fighting, what a, it goes on for a while, um... Meanwhile, Gruach and her father, their rooms are apparently, like, directly above this. So, like, they stick their heads out the window and are like, what the fuck is going on? And then Gruach is like, oh, Macbeth! Which, like, immediately distracts Macbeth, who then, like, also gets disarmed. So, like, thanks a lot, Gruach. I feel like that's more Macbeth's problem. It's both their problems. They're two horny kids, and they're too horny in this All they scene. wanted yeah. to do was just, like, jerk off over the weird chess game sexual <laughs> tension they had, and then all of a sudden, Macbeth's dad is you getting know, fucking those chess pieces sword fucked by some guy places. in a mask. Yeah, they weren't prepared for this level of, of debauchery that's happening. So everyone's like everyone's freaking out now. Macbeth's dad like charges back in, and he does the hunter in like a bear hug kind of remo- maneuver, and yeah, like, that actually kinda... looks like he's gonna win because like that the hunter drops. Hot. Yeah, it it was kind of hot. Mostly because the scene like before that was boring, and I was looking for any semblance of like, okay, is this horny yet? Mm-hmm. Also, Macbeth's dad is like very obviously also voiced by John Rhys Davies, so like mm-hmm. it's nice to hear his voice because anything yeah. he says is like. Yeah, Macbeth's hot. dad wasn't like bad looking. No, he was a good looking guy. He yeah. Was... You no, know, he you had know. longer hair. He basically looks like Macbeth, but with, like, longer hair and medieval. Yeah, yeah, pretty you much. You know, he's handsome. Mm-hmm. Um, tan. Tan. Was he tan? He was pretty tan. Nice. He's, you know, he, he works in the fields from time to time to time. Time to time to time to time. To time, to time. Mm. Peasant. Peasant. <laughs> I'm trying, like, I, as I'm saying, I'm just trying to look through my notes for, like, where I am. I'm, I'm trying to this find show, myself this to see that. Oh, basically, what happens next is that um, he's got him in the bear hug, right? Yeah. And then the, the backs him towards the edge, and... Um, and he gets the sword. So, like, the hunter is has no sword, but yeah. Macbeth's dad has a sword. And then the hunter just goes and does a, tor- a suplex to throw him over the edge. No, okay, well, like, Macbeth's dad is going to kill the hunter yeah. with the sword, and the hunter, like, yeah, does, like, some judo shit, and then Macbeth's dad goes over the edge instead. In, a, in like, the most Disney death possible. Uh-huh, you don't even see, like, the bottom of the cliff, you just see him, like, falling to 
black yeah that's just how they like, do oh. the deaths in this show is they just fall into blackness um i'm pretty sure realistically there would have been like a bottom to that castle they were at and he definitely well, would have hit the ground he's and the not survived of the castle well, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he's part of the ground to that castle now you know what i'm saying okay but like then is the part where, like, I get annoyed because, like, Macbeth is so fucking stupid. But, like, he goes to the edge of the balcony and he's all, like, crying. Be like, no, father. But, like, the hunter is still right there with no. a sword. So, like, the hunter's just like, well, I guess I'll kill him, too, since he made it so fucking easy. Um, but then, like, the person we least expected to save Macbeth shows up. Demona swings in. Who is she? It's she did Demona. Ex- she did exactly what she said she was going to do. Yeah, she waited till the hunter killed whoever he was going to, mm-hmm. and then she moved in. She is a woman of her word. She's beautiful. Mm-hmm. We love her. So, so okay. Like, she, like, hits the hunter. They, like, both make, make like, little speeches about how they, like, want to kill each other. Um, how they're going to get revenge. But then Macbeth also wants revenge. Like, there's this really funny part. He picks up a sword and, like, runs at the hunter with it. And then, like, the hunter, like, does the same judo shit on him. And, like, throws him at Demona. (laughs) Who then, like, just, like, (laughs) tail whips Macbeth out of her way, too. She's like, get this fucking human out of my face. Oh, God, that's ridiculous. And, like, it's so good. She's like, no. (laughs) And then, like, he almost falls off the balcony. Like, he's clinging to the edge, like, hanging off it. And, like, Gruach has to, like, go and, like, help pull him up. As if, like, she can't even fucking do that. Because, no. like, he's still falling and she's, like, holding on to him and, like, not being very useful. I don't know yet if I'm going to like Gruach in the rest of her scenes. She is not at her best in this one. I'm no. just trying to put it out there. Um, um, but she does apparently remind Demona of herself. Does she? Yep. Because I would have thought that Macbeth would, would remind her of herself. Because he's the one who's, like, screaming about revenge and, like, charging in. But I think it's that she and Macbeth remind her of Goliath. Of her and Goliath. And yeah, that's Goliath. definitely why she mm. did what she did. She still likes young love. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. She's got a soft spot for romanticism, just like Fox. Just like Fox. <laughs> just like Star Fox. Oh, Jesus. And Star Bull. <laughs> oh, okay. Um... But Demona does get to chew the scenery for a second because she says, know what it feels like to be hunted, human, and know that it's the last thing you will ever feel. Um, but before she can kill the hunter, she, like, notices, oh, this human girl is, like, not... <laughs> she's not pulling this human boy up, and, like, they're both gonna fall, actually, at this rate. So, like, sh- Demona goes, she abandons her fight, she goes and helps them both, she pulls them back, um, which is, I was astounded when I saw that, but since you've already explained it, I guess it makes sense to me now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but after she's done all that, like, the hunter, of course, is gone. Uh, he's, he's fucked off, just like those three little girls did before. Um, and then Gruach says, thank you. And Demona looks, like, so angry uh-huh. that a human is thanking her. Because, like, I don't think she really thought through her actions. She, like, acted, she just acted, like, on instinct, basically, to save these people. But now that she's, like, has her, like, head back, she's like, why the fuck did I do that? And, like, she, it almost looks like she's trying to, like, throw them back over the edge. But then she, like, she doesn't. She's like, ugh. She, like, growls and just, like, flies away. Um, we're almost at the end. The, sh- the scene shifts. We're, we're now at edinburgh castle Mm -hmm. uh we see prince valiant walking around a very well-appointed room um the hunter enters he calls the man prince duncan so we know who this is and then um uh he takes off his mask yeah he takes off his mask and we get the big reveal it's Gilcom Gang. It's that guy. It's that but older now. It's that child that Demona disfigured. Who, who Gilcom Gang does get named right before he gets disfigured. Mm. Yes, because he. It's one of those things where like he was giving his own name. He's like, oh, Gilcom Gang, do this. Gilcom Gang, do that. And I'm just like, shut up, child. Um, but now we see he's like a badass Assassin's Creed character. So you know he's moved up in the world. Mm. And basically, he and Duncan, they have, like, a conversation where they, they explain how evil they are and how, you know, like, Duncan hired the hunter to kill Macbeth's dad uh, to cement his own claim on the throne. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then Duncan's he's so happy, he summons, you know, food and drink. So these three serving girls come in. Um, there's one with blonde hair, one with black hair, and then one with white hair. Uh, not that they matter, because then the scene transitions back to the present day. Oh, I would like to point out that he did give Gilcom Gaines the stewardship. stewardship of Castle Moray. Yes, yeah. which is kind of important. It's not important to me. I'm tired of, of Scottish and English politics. So Moray is uh, Macbeth's Yeah, castle. it's the castle that they were just at, where yeah. Macbeth's dad died. Right, he, so the guy who just killed him now is in charge. I'm sure that nothing bad will happen due to that. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, so we're at the present day, and we see someone else is putting on the mask of the hunter. Someone with sexy body armor and abs. Who is he? Who is he? <laughs> uh, we will never find out. Um, but he's listening to Demona's magical recording, but he like he switches it off before she can finish it. Um, then there's a close-up on Elisa's ass as she's, like, walking down the hallway. Did you see that? I did not. It's, like, we... It's a very close view of it. Uh, but she's at she's at the police station, and, like, Matt stops her and is like, Uh, partner? What's the rush? And she's like, get the fuck away from me. And oh, he's yeah. like... <laughs> and he, like, he just, like... He just bitches at her. He's like, the phone's in the gym complaints about the weird broadcast. How about, uh, helping us out with them? And she's like, uh... Yeah, I'll get right on that. Bye. And she just, like, leaves. God, that's fucking... I, like, you know, I feel like at the beginning of this podcast, you know, when we were first mentioning Matt, I I, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, I don't know, I don't have any, like, Not negative anymore. memories. But no now longer. I get it. Now I get why he's annoying. <laughs> uh, and then at Castle Wyvern... It's sunset now, and we see Xantos getting into his helicopter. Fox is his pilot still. I think they're, like, having weird, like, helicopter pilot, passenger, like, roleplay sex. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's happening, but they're they're making their way to Pack Media Studios, and on the way over, Fox is like, so, that Demona broadcast... It's boring as shit. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I know entertainment. Uh -huh. I <laughs> in this very She's successful like, TV show. It's the most boring piece of shit I've ever seen, David. I, I don't love think it. you should be broadcasting this. <laughs> <laughs> and Xantos is just like, uh, well, I told you not to watch that, so like, you probably shouldn't have. And Fox is just like, oh, I don't care. I'm bored. <laughs> like what? At least like, one minute off like, my lifespan. She's like, I don't What's the big deal? It doesn't I'm a badass. But like, I just so, watch things when I want to. This is such a dumb decision by her, though. But yeah. like, okay, I feel like both Fox and Xanatos have made mistakes. One, Fox decided to just watch the magic broadcast, like knowing the type of person Demona is. So mistake number one. Yeah. Has, mistake number does two. She know? Actually, she's I, not interested with Demona. Okay, but I am sure that Xantos oh, has yeah. told her That's true. about Demona. I show, she's seen that fucking sex tape that they made to explain the gargoyles, <laughs> which included Demona <laughs> blowing up the castle with a bazooka. I mean, she Demona was at the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was at her wedding. She was the maid of honor. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. God. So that's mistake number one. Mistake number two, I do not feel that Xanatos adequately explained to Fox why she shouldn't watch the broadcast. Because I feel like if he was like, it's dangerous, like, don't do it, like, just... I feel like Fox would have listened to him, but whatever. This couple can't communicate with each other. Like, I used to ship the hell out of them as a kid. I don't know if I even do anymore. They need to talk things Just because of this one issue, mostly. But it's, it's been more things than this. Really? It, okay, remember when she was transforming to a were-creature and didn't tell David about it? Yeah. She was like, well, I have to keep it a secret for my beloved, because I don't know why. Well, the I've thing just decided is, to. The thing about Fox and Xanatos, <laughs> they're both sociopaths. They don't know oh, how no. normal people work. I feel like they get better as a couple as the show goes on. Yeah, like, yeah. They do. I'm surprised by like how much I'm just like, you guys are, you guys are fucking this they're, up. They're problematic. They are. Um, but, you know, their little tiff is interrupted by Boy Toy Owen, who, who calls on the phone and reports that there's a problem. Um, I guess it took him literally all day long to get out of, like, the bondage. And also, no one checked on him the whole time. 
So like, you know, this operation, Xanatos usually has a tighter ship than this. I don't know what happened today. Um, he, you know, it's maybe called, it's because they only had like two minutes of runtime in the present day, and this is the best thing. No, can do. it's because it, he's married now, and he wanted to go on a booty call. So like, he just he let the details <laughs> fade this time, and this is this will be his undoing. I like how he still hasn't learned to just not work with Demona at this point. <laughs> like she screws him over every single okay, fucking like, time. Like both him and Delia, like every time they're like, she's changed though. She won't do it this time. They're like Charlie Brown, and like she's Lucy. With the <laughs> that's a good metaphor actually <laughs> but so owen is like uh demona lied to us the spell she cast was not what she said it was and then he's interrupted like mid-sentence by just he turns to stone he gets while he's on the phone yeah he gets stoned and then the helicopter starts just like careening out of control and xantos looks over and fox is also turned to stone and it's just like uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, and then the helicopter's, like, starting to go a little haywire. Yeah. And then that's where we leave off on that one for now. Mm -hmm. And then the very last scene of our episode, our, our stinger, is we see the Manhattan plan wake up with some very sexy flexing, mm. just like the huge. And, and they go inside, and they see that for some reason someone left a statue of Elisa there for them. And that's how the episode ends. Oh. So that was City of Stone okay. part one of four. That was part one of four. Which yeah. I would like to point out, the reason this is such a long uh, four-parter is because it was originally written as a direct-to-TV movie. Really? Yes, but then that got canceled, and they were like, well, we like it too much. We're going to just convert it into episodes of the series. This would have been such a fucking awesome so, movie. So the reason it, got, it was um, what didn't get the green light is because the Manhattan clan featured in too little of the... It's true. It's all about Demona and Mitch Beth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, which, you know, we do need some... But yes, this was the first them. of two attempts to do a direct-to-video -to movie. Because Awakening was the first one. No, yeah. Or wait, no. What? Awakening was a pilot. It was planned as a five-part pilot. Uh-huh. The This was the first direct-to-video movie that they tried. What was the second one? The second one tried? was Hunter's Moon. Oh. Ah, that would have been a cool way to end the series. Right, so it was originally supposed to, to end with a direct-to-video movie, but they... Oh. It's, it got... I don't know what the details on that one, but it got kiboshed and they just reworked it as the final episodes instead. Cool. But, like... Apparently there was supposed to be like more episode. Like they lost like three or four episodes as a result near the end, mm. which is why they get back from the Avalon thing, and then it's like very See, few episodes. I always until... thought it was very quick after that. They just go to the end. Okay, yeah, that explains some of that then. Yeah, I fucking love this show. <laughs> like I, I know I know we complain about it, little tidbits here and there, but like it's just a great no, show. Yeah. Like I love Gargoyles. We, we wouldn't be doing this podcast if we didn't love the hell. Out of I probably wouldn't be here way. if it wouldn't if it weren't for Gargoyles. That's so. true. Like yeah. a large part, like a large part of your life has been affected by Gargoyles, and you would never have met me probably. No, unless, yeah, we. <laughs> if you hadn't been posting all those thirsty wolf gifs on Tumblr. <laughs> we would have never met each other in the first place. It's wild to think about <laughs> that. Like my my thirst for wolf was what put me on this path. Mm -hmm. Like, but yeah, no. All in all, um, I liked this episode a lot. Um, how much? How how many loincloths say would you? Give I thought it out of five loincloths. Just the the storytelling was very rich. Like I yes. liked it a lot, especially with Demona. Um, as much as. Like, it made me feel the same kind of angst that, like, the beginning of the show gave. And they delivered mm -hmm. very well on that. Um, I want to give it close to, like, a 5 out of 5 one class, but not quite because it's, like, it's not as good as, like, you know, what Awakening, like, Part 2 was. or um, I, I'd say, like, 4.5, maybe. Yeah, like, I think feel like this is... It has both one of the strongest scenes in all of City of Stone, mm -hmm. and is probably the weakest overall episode in City of Stone. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but by the strongest scene, are you talking about the one where Demona kissed the statue of Goliath? Uh, and everything Which leading scene? up to that, where she uh -huh. she found the yeah. Ever since everything from when she climbs up, that whole ever, ever thing. since she turns to stone, yeah. like and then comes, and then back, comes up, back. That whole scene <laughs> is like one of the greatest it's probably the best scene in the whole arc it's very powerful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's also attached to what is probably the weakest episode overall in the arc yeah but so the, i'm probably gonna give it a four yeah that's totally valid i mean um it lays a lot of great foundation for what's to come with city of stone but it doesn't exact it's not like the 
the real money shot of the arc, I'd say. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, there's still powerful imagery, like you know, like Goliath crying over, uh, uh, ah, Demona crying over Goliath, and mm-hmm. then of course there's um, Demona slashing what's his face's uh, face. Uh, Giltum Dane. I'm Giltum never gonna epic. pronounce that name correctly. I mean, I probably will in the future, but I don't feel like doing it right now. Gilcom um, Gain. Gilcom Gain. Gilcom Gain. Okay, got it. Gilcom Gain. Gilcom Gain. Gain. Gilcom Gain. Gilcom... <laughs> Say it with us. Gilcom Gain. <laughs> Hugbees. He's an asshole. Um, <laughs> and uh, seeing Demona as just like an aged gargoyle that's killing people, and that's very powerful I, imagery. I love it. I love that doesn't that leave her. you. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's why I was affected. But, yeah, no, like, um, I, I went off on another tangent, but, yeah. It's You're still giving your rating. Um, yeah, it's his turn. So, I have written on my notes a 5 out of 5. Really? But after actually, like, reviewing the whole episode again, I think I'm going to lower it down to a 4.5. Okay. Because... I hated the scenes at Castle Murray so much. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, like yeah. if it was only Demona scenes, it would be like ten out of five. Because like every scene she's in is fucking amazing. She sells it, and you she's know? so good. She she works hard and plays hard, like Beyonce. But like this is one of those things where like watching the episode, it's fine. But like having to note down like all the little details, I hate it. It's, yeah. So like reviewing the like episode like even made me dislike it a little bit even more. when we were going through that scene in the podcast, we were both kind of like we were all kind of losing our shit just at how long that sequence was. And like it's not even that long, but like with every scene in the show, like they pack as much information into it as they possibly can, and it's just like it's it's a lot. I don't know if it was because I was bored, but like since we're getting into the horny moment segment in a minute, mm-hmm. um. I guess now. Uh, yeah, this is now. Okay. Horniness happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's weird. This is going to be weird, but it's probably because I was personally bored by that whole sequence. That's when I was like at the horniest. I'm just like, <laughs> you know what? Because this... you just want something to happen. Yeah, something yeah. Sexual. I'm like, you know what? You know what? That big dude with the ginger beard. Yeah, you. You. I'm going to fixate on just that. He is very close friends with Macbeth's dad. Yeah, that's intimate friends i don't even think count that as a horny moment i'm just like this mo- this this moment bored me into being horny all right so th- this i have a moment that no one's going to have considered oh. i'm pretty sure um because i'm pretty sure it's recycled footage that was not brought up the first time around hmm. um but there's a moment goliath right- like turn around at y- some point yes <laughs> um when <laughs> goliath is like yeah, I'm not taking the entire clan out and leaving the castle undefended. I'm just going to go get Rob Hudson. Mm-hmm. And he turns and walks away. And, and his hair like... is, like, gorgeously animated oh. and it looks oh, so good. Oh, my gosh. And his back looks wonderful. Uh-huh. And, he's, yeah, he, he looks so good in that moment. All, I want to wash man. his back. You know what I'm saying? Like, scrub it with a sandpaper. Yeah, with yeah. scrubby. Yeah, or whatever yeah. gargoyle texture it so. needs, you know? So yes, yeah, so that that that's Stone not my polish. horniest moment, but I needed to bring up because I missed it when it was going through the first time. Yeah, that, yeah. That I was... probably noticed that, but I didn't. I didn't take any notes on that. So yeah. thank you for calling my attention. Um, I don't. Okay, there were. I felt like there were actually slim pickings for horniness in this episode. I mean, um, all I, all I have is like. If you want to swing that way, like, maybe Owen getting tied up. But, like, that didn't do anything for me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, but there there was that one moment where that one beefy gargoyle got thrown by Demona. Yes, that is the one that I have written thing. down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, that's, that's like, the best that's I could the, find. That's the go-to. Because, <laughs> that, like, he's all spread-legged afterwards. And, and, and like, he's surrounded by... A, by other a, hunky a, hot a, gargoyles. gargoyles. Because every other gargoyle in this clan, for some reason, is a guy, except for Demona. And she just okay. doms all of them. Okay. I, Gargoyles is a show. There's like five men for one woman. That's just how it always is. Demona is such a queen. Like she's just got like five men doing her bidding. One of them being mm-hmm. Brooklyn's brother. You yeah. know. So I mean, that's probably why. Okay. Her and Brooklyn... okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Imagine if you know the episode where she like seduces Brooklyn. I was about to what say that. What if she'd been like, oh, by the way. I fucked your brother. I was just <laughs> thinking that. I wonder if that's why, like, Demona is, like, weirdly attracted to Brooklyn. Not just because, like, she can easily oh sway God. him. 
because of his horniness. But she like, knows he has similar turn ons to his brother. And like, knows, like, like how to like this is to oh her. This God. is like revisiting like kind of like an old like fuck buddy that she used oh to like wander. God. Like she's like this she's is, like, like okay. Let's see if you're just as big as your brother was. This is canon to me because it makes that previous episode even more fucked up, and that's like the best kind of retcon. Yeah. That like oh shit. <laughs> I love that. That's really good. That's mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. While we're talking about horny things, I have a question Uh-oh. for the two of you. So, oh, no. all of us here in the Loincloth Hour crew, we, we all sort of have a thing for masked men. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is the hunter mask hot? Can I just show you my notes? <laughs> okay, let me read it out loud. Uh, okay. But Jilton Jane is so hot in this scene. Is it the scene where he was trying to chill? Yes! That? Yeah, yes! he did look really good. Um, he didn't do anything for me. No? No, I mean, I think he was just too, like, um, maybe it's because he was, like, trying to actually kill someone that just turned me off. But how about, okay, not to, not to spoil things, but how about when Macbeth wears the hunter mask? Oh, <laughs> Let me tell you. What, what if Macbeth was wearing only the hunter mask? <laughs> oh, you foul temptress. You foul. You vixen. You absolute vixen. Oh, no. That was good, wouldn't it? Okay, I like. I know we <laughs> thirst over the gargoyles a lot, but I'm just saying the humans in this show aren't bad looking too. No, like they could get not. some fan yeah. art. Can we get some fan art? Maybe someone who's listening oh of like God. just maybe <laughs> Macbeth wearing only the hunter's mask because I'm seeing that visually and it's like gorgeous in my mind. We, we've eye. now moved on to directly just asking for hot fan art in the, in the podcast. <laughs> I'm not yes. directly asking. Yes, I'm just you just you did. Just directly asked. <laughs> and I approve. I I approve of it. I'm throwing the suggestion <laughs> if out. An there. artist would wish to draw this. We wouldn't. None of us would say no to the, it. The, there's got to be some artist who's listening to this podcast that also likes masked men. So I'm just uh, saying. I'm almost positive that there is. Like, yeah. like I'm not trying to like. I'm not holding anyone at gunpoint here. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we're all just having fun here. <laughs> we're having a good time talking about sexy masked men. Okay. Okay. All right. This is your fault. So. How is it my fault? Because you're the one who brought the oh, idea yeah. up. I did, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> this one is definitely your I fault. almost did a Demona. Like, how, what have I, what have they done? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But who needs a moment? I think we can all agree on what it is then. It's the manhandling. The manhandled man. Yeah. The yeah. man. I wish he had a man voice. I would love to have more fan yeah. art of that particular guy because he yeah. is very good looking. There's a lot of just characters you can make a doodle fan art about. Uh, like, I think rumor has it he's supposed to show rumor up as a. In Time Dancer? In Time Dancer, because if you remember, he appears in like that one. Last scene we see of the gargoyle plan. I do remember when, that right because before, I noticed how hot he was in the. So topic. like <laughs> the, it's everyone kind of assumes that he's if Tom Dancer ever gets made, he's gonna be a major character. Yeah, or you know he'd be in it. Yeah. Well, I mean for for the for that arc mm-hmm. while he's in that time, like he's not yeah. gonna stay past. I would that. love that. But he's probably gonna be like the the uh, gargoyle. For that mm-hmm. time period. What do you think Demona would Besides call Demona. him? Like, what brand of fool do you think she calls him? You, oh you gosh. hard-headed hunky. fool. She's a, you she, hunky fool. She has a demeaning kink. Oh my gosh. Like, all the guys she just, like, dominates. She just likes calling them, like, different kinds of, like, fool subsets. Like, this is her... This is how she fucks. I love it. What a queen. Okay. Okay, so I think next up is emails, right? Or am I missing yeah, something? Yeah, we usually do emails. Gayest character? Oh, oh we yeah. skipped that. Okay. Uh, I have all I have written is Nick Beth and Fruit Watch Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that because I don't really. <laughs> let's just get to the emails. Yeah, yeah it, it, they gave me like Captain of the Guard and Hayton vibes. It's just like two dads who met, fell in love. Uh, they're less problematic than the Viking. Yeah. Word, so you know. Yeah. 
anything else you want to say about these two dads? I mean, we, no. might, we might see... Oh, no, we won't see more of them. There's one of them to start. Well, we see episode. more of one of them. We'll see more of Gruach's dad. Yeah. I think he turns into an asshole later on. Oh, well. If I remember correctly. I don't think he I'll does. turn him into an does, asshole. I, I, I maybe... <laughs> Wait, what did you just say? <laughs> I said I'll turn him into an asshole. I'll turn his asshole around into my cock. <laughs> Emails! <laughs> Emails! Emails! Well, my voice is actually beginning to go hoarse now, so one of you has to read the emails. Uh, okay. Read the emails. Uh, uh, well, what are we going to exchange? It's the top two, I think. So we have two, two. emails. Okay, cool. One, I'll read Remy's. That, that the, that's the top one, right? Yeah, that's the top one, Artisac. Okay, I'll be reading the one from Artisac. Uh, because we totally actually remember, gave people warning that we were going to be recording this time and didn't post it like a couple hours ahead of time. He okay. When did he send this? Was like it nineteen like a few hours days? ago. Oh, yeah. well, you know, Artisac. Before we, like, he just happened to know we were going to record today. He is magical sometimes. <laughs> He's in the boutique, so he probably saw mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we must have said something. Um, hey, Loin Clock lads! So excited for you to tackle this series of episodes. I think it's one of the show's best with a great character arc in Demona. Yeah. I'll never forget that line when she sees Goliath first and stuff and asks, "What have I?" What have they done yes. to you? It sums up everything about her. She can't afford to break that illusion that she's the hero. She can't admit she's as guilty as the humans. A thousand years later, when she should have learned better, she keeps deflecting responsibility for doing her clan. Even after she was reunited with Goliath and the Manhattan clan, she should be content, but her thirst for revenge is just too strong. Mm-hmm. She ends up ruining her chance of happiness again and again. She's almost a Shakespearean villain. When I first watched the show, I was blown away at the character death. Especially after so many other cartoons of goofy villains being evil for the sake of evil. Another reason why the show is fantastic. I turn to dream more. Okay. Fully. This next part is a bit off topic. But, have you ever heard of the Max Headroom incident? The Max Headroom is incident? You mean the one with Russell Tresh? <laughs> Generation that... X? Yes. Our favorite TV <laughs> movie? <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. Uh, there's an explanation. Okay, here. well, I'll say no, I haven't. So no, I haven't heard I'm not What is this? <laughs> but let me, let's read the explanation and find out. In 1987, someone hijacked two Chicago TV signals and broadcast this bizarre uh, video, which you can find on YouTube. Okay, actually, you actually like. I did know about this, yeah. It's a little creepy, and there's even some ash cheeks being spanked with a fly swatter. It's not the first... That, that's how I know about it, because it was in Spanko. <laughs> like, Spanko is used to mention it once okay. in a while. <laughs> Uh, it's not the first broadcast intrusion, but it's definitely the most famous. I kept thinking about it when the editors were doing their broadcast. I thought, <laughs> what if instead of chanting a spell, they actually the broadcast one of the editors' sex tapes? You know, one of the hundreds upon hundreds that he makes an Owen film? <laughs> I love it. Keep up the good work, Artie. Okay, and he posted a link to the yeah. to the broadcast interruption. I guess we can take a look oh, at this. He called himself Artie. That's so yeah. cute. Artie. That's an X-Men character. Okay. I think so I this called is him that. two minutes long. We don't need to watch the whole we thing. We don't need to. No. <laughs> it looks like most of this is just... Uh, yeah, this looks like the actual just broadcast interruption. Yeah. This is clearly just like... I, I, I feel like this is just some troll in a basement doing oh, this. here we mm-hmm. go. Or maybe it was a publicity stunt. You never know. What is this? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's grotesque. Wow. Powerful stuff. <laughs> so, like, okay. Yeah, that's that's what it was. I'm sure that it's kinda cute. We'll get posted on Twitter at some point. Yeah. Okay, so I'll read Remy's, which looks like it's a few paragraphs long. <laughs> Which is fine. Finally. Good old Remy. No, we, we I, love it. I love the longer the He's better. He's so in my opinion. thorough, and I just can't help but respect him for that. He's as long as his emails as Brooklyn is long in his beak. Anyways, <laughs> hi again, Loin Cloth Hour crew. Hope is well on your side. As per usual, you guys take an episode I don't care much about and make it a fun one. Glad to see Sid and I agreed in regards to time travel stuff, and I agree with Creep too. Petros was the best, and it's a yeah. shame we don't see him much in the series. I hope he comes back soon. 
And it is really unique how time travel works with gargoyles. It basically says that no matter what time travelers do, what happens in time is meant to happen. No amount of tampering will change that because the time traveler trying to tamper was always meant to happen as it is. It's kind of confusing while it also makes sense in a way, but in a way that feels weird where that no changes can be made, which means that the actual events of Time Dancer were always meant to be that way. A 40-year journey through time? Man, that must suck big time in some ways, but could be interesting in others. But we'll see if the upcoming season four of the comic shows any of that. I hope it does. Me too. <clears throat> but enough about that, because the main event is here. The iconic city of Stone Arc. And man, is, is it a doozy. Granted, it starts off kind of iffy. What with those terrorists who cause, <laughs> whose cause we never even find what out about. What is their cause? Like, they're clearly okay with, like, killing, killing over kill. it. Yeah, like, what is it? Uh, are they environmentalists? Oh. Are they, like, what are they? I, I, there is one small thing I have to bring up while I'm thinking about it. So, um, this probably wouldn't surprise anyone, but af starting in the early 2000s, the word terrorist was just flat out edited out of this episode, and they just don't say anything whenever the word terrorist oh, it's pops just up. silence? It's just silence instead. Interesting. Interesting. I guess uh, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, but that, that you know, just tidbit. They they were uh, doing it for uh, for the lulls. Um, anyways, and then Brendan and Margot, who pissed me off. Like, who gives a fuck if the gargoyles <laughs> aren't human? They're hot, right? Who they cares? saved your worthless butts. They're talking oh, yeah. to you in and fluent English. You. And I know it's a shock to see winged loincloth wearing beasts burst in through the walls, but yeesh, not even the slightest bit of awe or gratitude, just fear and hostility. But mm. then the episode starts picking up, and thank goodness. It was really quite fascinating to see what happened at the castle back then from a distant perspective, as well as tragic and a bit annoying how almost every decision Demona made just kept making everything worse and screwing herself and others over. I admit I was genuinely surprised when she saved a young Macbeth's life, showing there was still hope for her, but we all know how that turns out eventually. It started with a fascinating mm. and well-told tragedy, and man, I can't wait for you guys to cover it all. Other details were fun as well, from Xanatos going forward with this plan of extending their lives but still not fully trusting Demona, and the animation era at the start of the terrorist thing, showing four gargoyles with fully extended wings flapping in the night of the moon on the way to foil the terrorists, but one of these four was Lexington, who can't extend nor flap his wings. Oh, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> oh yeah, because there's only four. Oh, okay. I have to go back and look at that now to see. <laughs> I did not catch that one. There was also the triplets having those different forms throughout, really adding the to the mystery early on. And mm -hmm. Gilkamane going from a simple poor farm boy to a deadly brute hitman. And I oh, was brute. especially mm -hmm. taken with the varied looks of Demona's small clan of gargoyles back in the past, mm -hmm. with Brooklyn's biological older brother especially catching my attention. It's a bummer for me that we never get to truly know him. Makes me wonder how he could have varied from Brooklyn in terms of personality had he ever survived and joined the Manhattan clan in modern day he'd probably not be a simp and have a different <laughs> fetish than electrocution what, what would Brooklyn's brother's fetish be? Uh, uh, well he was femmed on by Demona in a cave for years so I mean you know I feel like he'd be into like diaper play oh no God. come on <laughs> okay, okay how about breath play breath play uh, sure. Like, maybe there's some, like, some drowning stuff. Because people are into that, I guess. I mean, I feel like he, he wouldn't even know what a diaper is, so... He learns about them once he gets to modern day and gets an inexplicable sexual fetish over them. Oh my god. Just like when Brooklyn learned about electricity and was not, like, super into it. I want to apologize mm -hmm. for my, like, loud reaction to the diaper play thing. I'm pretty sure there might be some listeners who are into it. I'm... Personally, I'm not into it, but I mean, hey, you know, we all have our preferences. Maybe he would be. Who knows? He definitely. I feel like he definitely would. Okay, I wouldn't go that far. Um, <laughs> it's interesting to me, knowing how some of these were rogue gargoyles themselves and others were survivors of a splinter clan, as in a number of gargoyles from the Wyvern clan that left to form their own separate clan and ran into their own problems that ended badly, only makes me wish we could see more aspects of the lives of different clans of gargoyles before beyond what the show displayed. Anyway, yes, I do too. That should be all for now. I'll save any timeline stuff for the fourth and final episode of this arc. Ah. Thank you for the, your guy. Thank you guys for all your hard work and keep doing what you're doing because we're all enjoying it. Take care. 
Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Remy. I just, it, it always feels like you're a part of this podcast, honestly. Yeah. Like, you're as integral as the rest of us are. Like, reading, I feel like reading his email at the end of every episode is just like, it just gives a good feeling, you know? Yeah, like, he's, like, we, we kind of recap in our own discordant way. And then he provides, like, the clarity at the end. Like, yeah. This is... I got distracted. So, <laughs> so I believe next is a new segment, correct? Uh, Do you have to read off a certain name that you haven't okay, told well, us? I'm, I'm looking to see if we got any other... Oh, okay. Any other messages. Well, while that's happening, I'm going to plug myself. And we'll start okay. off art. Anyways, uh, I'm here on. You can find me on... Twitter or AO3 is penguin underscore Huron or on FA as once three 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 three. And I'm a bit of a writer if you're looking for writing stuff about men being captured and generally spanked. You know, like in yeah. gargoyles. Uh, like in gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> Who heard of that show, you know? Um I I'm Sydney, aka Sid Scripps on Twitter, aka Alistair Alderman on for Affinity. I hate that name, but God, I I have to wear it for now. Um, I edit things. I write things. I do many internet projects um, of a variety of forms. Uh, you can just follow my updates on my Twitter for the most part. Um, currently not taking commissions as I'm swamped with like a million other things, but who knows? Maybe in the near future I could uh, arrange my schedule. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Someday. And I am Manicorn uh, on Patreon and Croup on For Affinity and Spanktacorn on Twitter. And those are the big ones. That's all I'm going to say for now. I'm in too many places. I'm on DeviantArt. I'm on Archive of Our Own. I'm on MailSpank.net. But you have to hunt me on those locations. YouTube? I won't make it so easy. I'm man service on YouTube. The best YouTube channel. The best YouTube channel. Ever made. As, as, you know, as people it say. It is the only one that truly matters. It's the only one. Don't follow anyone else. Only follow me. Yes. Um, but now, for our $5 patron, we only have one, but maybe next time we record, we'll have more than one. But it is the one and only Artizek, <gasps> our five dollar guy. Yay! Thank you, Artizek, for helping our podcast. Thank you so much, Artie. We love you. And we and... hope that you like the special video that we're gonna link you to mm. soonish of us reading the gargoyle comic Ooh, hoo, and, hoo, hoo. and talking about how insane it actually is <laughs> it's it's in, it's a it's an experience for certain there's a lot <laughs> okay so yeah um i think that about wraps it up then uh tune in next time for city of stone part two and you know patrons tune in for that video coming soon yeah mm-hmm. yeah okay. all righty that we have, to find an, we have to have a fun in outro uh Let's quick say something funny. Uh, something funny. That's all, folks. When you're lost in a, in a, in a, in a, time after time. <laughs> That's all I got. And you still find it. Time after time. <laughs> <Stop singing. laughs> no, it's fun. <laughs>